Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be looking at part 6 to our series guide. Uh, we're going to be looking and examining a lot of common scenarios and uh, what we can take away from them. These are all collections of videos taken from a Facebook page called I Got Bogged It In Skip. There'll be a link in the description so you can go to their Facebook page and watch all their videos yourself. There's heaps of them there. It's just basically filmed from, from that from a place there where there is a lot of uh, situations that are useful for us to helpful uh, to educate and analyze and review and have, have, a, have a look at portions of, of what went wrong and what we can do about it. So we're using this under the fair use policy and I'll put some information in the description that will, in relation to that so you know why we're doing this in this format. And we're doing this so that we can hopefully uh, learn from what we see and uh, make sure that we don't end up in similar sorts of situations or that we can help educate other people as well. Because um, we see that uh, 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 there'll be a link in the description to a couple of news articles that have recently popped up for four-wheel drive enthusiasts and uh, it's quite interesting what's been going on. And as I mentioned, this disclaimer in, in relation to fair use, but also in the fact that we're using this, we're not criticising any, any of the individuals or the people that are involved in these videos. It's more for our uh, purpose of looking at it from an objective perspective. Now, this one here, we've got a vehicle that is doing one of the things that we talked about in the, our previous series. So if you've missed that, you can always go back through the links and have a look. Where Instead of stopping once you realize you're not moving forward where this has happened, they're not going anywhere, but they are continually applying power through all their tires. And they're just digging themselves into the sand, which is not going to get you out of the situation you're in. Uh, it doesn't help, I think, that that uh, the one, I can see that the rim size is rather large. I'd be saying that they're at least 18 inch rim, so you, you, you're losing rubber. Uh, doesn't mean you can't do a lot of things just means you should hopefully have your tires deflated I can't see for certain whether this person does or doesn't um, I can make an assessment based on the fact that we're seeing other people go around them it means that uh, that area is passable it's just this person maybe either didn't gain the momentum hasn't gotten deflated their tires properly and I can see uh, just making an education by the way they're using, utilizing the, what's going on is the fact that they probably haven't learned some of those es essential elements, which is first, we should make sure that once this action happens, we stop and we deflate further. Like this white car here is another example, is, is low momentum, not going very fast, tries to go up an angle to get around. So front end still turning. The arrow is actually pointing to the guys using the max tracks now to try and help that that car get out of its situation. But that front, car, that white car, you see, it's turning for a long time again, trying to power through a problem and not getting anywhere. Notice here the rear tire is not moving at all. Eventually it does, and it is able to reverse out. But again, uh, I don't know. It, they should just stop powering as soon as it can't go any further, and then go into reverse. This one here is showing you. I don't know why they're not using the black track at the back. Again, here they're digging this out, and at first uh, it churned up um, on that track. And the last thing you want to do is is actually when you've got a max track there, you should actually dig out more um, rather than just trying to dig out enough to put your max track under. This here is just to point out the fact that I really appreciate that guy's actually deflating his tyres once he sees what he sees. Fortunately, this person gets enough traction off those max tracks to pop itself out. That's, that's just really fortunate. It's probably really nice and soft and he's able to get out. I would have probably liked to have seen them dig a little bit and get out. Uh, one thing we don't want to see with max tracks is, is if you're using them, uh, is you don't want to see someone who has previously powered heaps through that do that to your max tracks or tear off the lugs. In this one, we can see this one, unfortunately, I don't get the rest of it, but you see here again, there is a lot of power. He's pushing, slowly moving, and he's thinking he's going a long way, but in actual fact, he's just digging up that back section, and he's not stopping and going, oh, I've got a lot of weight through that back. My front tires aren't spinning as much as my back tires, and all I've now done is bury the back end. And obviously, yeah, the back end is rather heavy because it's towing stuff, but um, 
Yeah, that one's not a great, great one. We didn't get the rest of the video to see what happened to him, but uh, it's a good example of of what you should have done. Here we've got a scenario where this, I, we don't have the starting video as to how this Pajero got bogged, but the Pajero is bogged and it's bottomed out, it's pretty much flat. Now the issue here again, no front tyres are being turned, the backs you can see obviously are spinning. Uh, the blue car, I don't know why you'd, I mean he's there trying to attempt a recovery of a much heavier vehicle, he's going to struggle with that, not only that, it's towing a jet ski, I mean it's yes a little weight but he can't even now actually get out of the position he's in at all. So yeah, it's not a good idea that he even try this. So and not to mention they're using the tow ball to do it with. Um, again, you can see that front wheel's not turning, so whether or not he's got it engaged properly, whether or not he's in full drive high, um, low, that makes sure that the power is sent to the front wheel, I don't know, but you can definitely see it's not happening. So here we have the grey vehicle come over and, and uh, assist with this recovery. Now they disconnect the Pajero, which is good, but what I don't like to see is the fact that they're using a tow wall again to connect uh, this blue car to the grey um, to the grey car, and watch what happens. Bang! There goes a broken snatch strap, and that's not what we want to see. And not to, not to mention, I mean, eventually the the blue car. I mean. Um, they're shaking it as a way of trying to get enough traction to move it. I mean, hand power provides more than the, the strap did. I don't know how they connected it, but if they're using a tow ball at one end and he doesn't have a, a recovery point at the, the other, uh, either it wasn't a, on a proper recovery point and it just came loose, or it snapped that non-rated recovery point, but that's why we have rated recovery points, so that doesn't happen. Um, because if someone was standing there, uh, that might hit them and cause a lot of damage and we don't want that to happen. Uh, and as we can see, a lot of cars are actually going past here that are, that are carrying or pulling heavy weight. So you know that it can be done. Now here, the not a good idea is the fact that he's attaching it to the back of his tow ball and we can see the gentleman that's standing there right in the middle. Um, of that snap strap. Now we just witnessed either the snap strap break or, or come off and once again here it's just come off the rear of that tow ball and he's realized it got the guy back and he's just looping it over the top. As we discussed in previous video when we looked at how to do recoveries properly, uh, I'll put a link in the description if you want to check out that, you never use your tow ball uh, he may ruin it so he can never undo his, get his tow ball out of that car at all. Not to mention it's really, really unsafe, as you've seen. Um, and this guy's standing right there in between. There's no weighted blanket on that snap strap, so if it does come loose, uh, it can't be dampened by a weighted blanket at all. And this guy's right in the middle of it, so not a great idea. And he just plonks it on the sand right next to his feet. Um, and there's no communication going on between the two cars there's, so when he applies the power he's just ripping it and they're having a crack at it the only positive thing is is at least he's not going crazy with the power once he realizes he's not able to pull the car but um yeah as we can see there are a lot of cars able to get through with with heavier um towage and I'm hard, I'd be making the case that they're probably either using the correct weight um, to get, no, sorry, the correct PSI to get through and this scenario or similar to our first scenario happened where he dug himself into this situation. Again, it slips off. Um, and I'm looking at Pajero and I, you know, if it's got a... Uh, Nardish bar, it's highly unlikely it's, it's got a dedicated recovery wine. Could do, but it's generally, I don't see them often a lot if they're not got a bull bar. They, they generally don't have rated points. So, it may do, but I'm just, uh, it's just a simple observation. Anyway, fortunately, a, another ute comes in here, yeah, a big ute, and uh, to help them. The other thing I don't like to see is the fact they never bothered to get out shovels to help clear a lot of that sand out that he bottomed out. You would have found that it would be it's much easier to recover a car if there isn't all that sand that is basically stopping your car from moving 
Um, so if you got out the shovel and dug a little bit, maybe it would have worked a lot easier. Here we see good snatch. He's done done the job, but he could do some dragging for a little bit. But hey, at least he's free. So that's that's a win then, I guess. Uh, not done right, but I just wanted um, with this th with this one, guys. Uh, a lot of people watch but don't subscribe so if you enjoy our videos please click like the subscribe button it helps us continue to grow our channel helps us continue to produce our content and a big thank you to our patreon supporters to or they also help continue to create our content and help us uh, go on trips that make more new content in addition to what we do here so a big thanks and link in the description if you want to know more about that the get it stuck into our next one so here we have a very very similar example to what we had in the first one where we have a car uh, that is churning out up the sand and is not going anywhere very fast now first you go first he goes forward and he realizes he's not getting a lot of traction and he's not moving very quickly um, and it continues to either go forward and back and because he's churning up that sand Normally we would say if you, you find you get stuck, uh, I would generally get out on a PSR bit or switch in a forward low depending on the scenario. Uh, then I would try and drive forward. Yeah, as soon as I realized, and I do like the fact that they let out the, the tire pressure on the trailer, but the one thing I don't like is the fact that I, you don't see them doing that to the vehicle at all, uh, which would be a, a great benefit that you may actually self-recover if you just deflate more of your car tires, not just the trailer tires. So that's the only thing we don't see. And again, he continues to just churn that sand and you're churning it, you're just making it softer so that it's just, you're not going to produce a fan surface when you're just flicking up sand and, and basically turning it into, finer and finer sand which makes it harder to drive on so as soon as you churn that sand and then particularly when he tries to drive back over it you're driving back over really soft sand it's like you're kicking it all up and then uh, then you're trying to then kick it all up back the other way it just it's not going to work you need to fatten it by constant pressure on it not dig 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 you just it's not going to work that way um so this is just like banging your head against the wall and hoping that you're going to get jawed. Um, it's not going to work, so something has to change. Hopefully you, you'd get out and, and work with your PSIs first. Uh, you'd work with hopefully Max Tracks because later we'll, we'll see that they've got them. Um, and get yourself out of where you've dug yourself onto something firm. Now what I want to point out, as this patrol comes into the screen, First, that surface in between the two tracks that you obviously come in and out of. Um, you saw he had a lot of clearance one when he was coming through that firm surface in between, which is a great use. Uh, they resort to snatch straps straight away. And what I don't like to see here is, even though I think that uh, the, the both using rated recovery points, I can just tell that by looking at it, that they're not using tow balls. But they're using that snatch strap more like uh more like a tote and he's basically skull dragging this guy up the beach uh, which isn't going to work very well he's just digging a hole for his car as he does it that's not what a snatch strap is, is is supposed to do the idea is you take up the slack of the snatch strap you accelerate through and you create kinetic energy which is for the snatch strap about 20 percent of its actual um, the stretch it stretches 20% and then it releases that kinetic energy and the idea is that then provides enough to pull the car pop it out of, of of where it is so in this case now he's torn up the track so much going forward that he's struggling to go backwards so if he was getting snatched out of this the, the snatch would pop him back out of that soft stuff onto something a little bit firmer yeah I am because it's just so uh, I look at this and I'm just I just don't understand why they you know they're continually trying like at the moment he's trying to actually get forward enough to even apply pressure to the snatch strap because he's tuned up that track so bad he drove into it nice and easily 
And the track was really good until he tuned it all up by continually trying to drag this person along the beach. Uh, it's just the incorrect use of that strap. There's also a lot of people standing around a snatch strap that's continually under strain, which isn't ideal. That's not what we're being used for. I do like the fact here though that he steers up onto the firmer surface, so getting out of those deep soft tracks that he's churned up. Now he takes a slack of the snatch once he's on firmer surface, but he does the exact same problem, which is continues to churn it up. Whereas what he should have done is now he's on firmer surface, utilize that firm surface. Don't keep powering through this and don't keep putting the constant strain through that trap strap. See at the moment, all he's doing is just putting his foot down and letting the car just constantly turn that wheel. And then we see again here, we got another bystander or a person standing really close to that strap. Um, and that's not where you need to be. No communication uh, is going on. And what's even worse is he's now pushing it. Uh, and you can see there, there, they've tipped it in towards the actual track itself or where the rut was. So now he's dropped it in there and he's got himself really bogged up in that position and it's almost it's useless now he can't even actually uh, get himself out of the position that he's in um which is you know it's, it's just end up getting himself bogged rather than actually helping this person out so uh, you, you would want the rear car to do a bit, <laughs> bit of digging um use their tracks lower the psi utilize the snatch strap properly not continue to scale drag like this not continue to accelerate and dig holes for both the recovery car and the car that's stuck you can see that we've got tracks inside the trailer there they're not utilizing uh so there's a lot of things that are wrong in that in that scenario there and it's things that we really want to avoid and we got uh we did a, a video on how to recover your vehicle safely with the snatch strap and we demonstrated that when we looked at comparing the strap and the, and the um, kinetic rope together so there's a link if you want to check out how we went about that and what you should or should what how you should do it um, and we will look at further examples of some of the videos from here because this is just a little little bit that i could find and uh there's quite a few more that i want to uh, basically take you guys through as good examples of what we can assess and some we can measure up to what has been different in these videos and in the new ones. This I want to point out is the cars are now using the other side but you can see how much the this surface is kind of firm but the problem that I have here is the distance that uh, between the vehicles that are going in and out often is quite short which means that if the vehicle in front for whatever reason loses momentum that vehicle behind you're now stuck because you can't continue because you, you're not allowing spacing. So always keep it long spacing so you've got enough room to do your own run up for the soft bit. This I don't like is the fact they're trying to now recover. All three vehicles are, are connected together. Uh, not, not a great way. That's not the best way to, to recover a car. Uh, you should just try and recover that first. You should recover the patrol first and then they should work out the next car after that. Not try and drag all three out. Um, not to mention the communication required to try and synchronize that. It's terrible. Now watch what happens. Bang. There goes that snatch strap. Being put under so much pressure and you're trying to pull three, it's, it's, it's bound to happen. And again, if they're not uh, utilizing them correctly, there's, there was no way to blank us. It was just really fortunate. No bystanders were there that, that got injured. But once again, can show you how dangerous it can be and why... You, uh, correct use of these is really important. Now I do like the fact that the vehicle that's doing the recovery is on the firmer surface here, so utilizing that ground, even though it's sometimes important to be straight on and straight behind, uh, accelerates forward a bit, excessive behavior, hey, gets the job done. I do like the fact that even though it turns a little bit, it wasn't excessive and then he goes back and he does it again. So at least that bit's not too bad. And you can see you got further back offering hand signals. So at least there's some form of communication going on there. But he's trying to pop him out onto the firmer surface and he gets the job done. So uh, could have been done a lot easier. They really went the hard way. But 
you know what, uh, they got the job done and you got out, so that's something. So I want to thank our Patreon supporters, help you make all this content available. Uh, if there's a bunch of other videos, go check them out, check the whole series out. And uh, we'll be looking forward to doing more of these ones where we're looking at some more examples and scenarios that are off from this same location because there's so much to analyze and learn from, from what's going on with a lot of these videos. So if you like it, hit the subscribe and like button and leave us a comment. Um, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for listening.